Just recently, China's Global Times reported on an impending test flight of a strategically important aircraft, prompting a whole slew of predictions that the nation's first stealth bomber, commonly known as the H-20, may soon be unveiled. This could mean the end of America's two-plus decade-spanning monopoly on stealth bomber technology and have far-reaching geopolitical implications. Let's dive into what we know about China's stealth bomber. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. The only operational stealth bomber in the world today is America's Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit, which first flew in 1989 and entered operational service in 1997. Unlike any other operational stealth platform in the world today, the B-2's flying wing design is effective at limiting detection from both high and low frequency radar bands. As a result, the somewhat dated and significantly larger B-2 Spirit is often more difficult to detect and track than even America's most modern stealth fighter, the F-35. As we've covered just recently, fifth-generation fighters like the F-35, the F-22, China's J-20, or Russia's Su-57 are all limited by the physical requirements for aerobatic fighter performance, forcing the inclusion of design elements like vertical tail surfaces that can render them detectable against low-frequency radar arrays that aren't capable of providing a target-grade lock. As I mentioned in our video all about this topic, when an F-35 is in the neighborhood, you know it, even if you can't target it. But aircraft like the B-2 Spirit are so stealthy that it could fly over your nation and you may not ever even realize it was there. Today, America's 25-year monopoly on heavy payload, deep penetration stealth bomber technology may be coming to a close. But with America's own next-generation stealth bomber, the Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider, now in the later stages of development, the real question is, will China's H-20 be its next-generation peer, or just another page ripped, or maybe ripped off, from America's own low-observable history books? To answer this question effectively, we've got to take a stroll back to the early 2000s, when rumors of China working to develop a stealth bomber first began to emerge. These rumors were often tied to reports of Chinese officials gaining access to the wreckage of an American F-117 Nighthawk that was shot down over Yugoslavia in 1999. Throughout much of the following decade, rumors persisted that China was working to develop their own Nighthawk equivalent. In other words, a low-observable attack aircraft leveraging a similarly angular design to Lockheed's F-117. Then, in 2005, a Northrop Grumman design engineer who had helped develop the B-2 Spirit's propulsion system, a man by the name of Noshir Gawadia, I apologize if I mispronounced that, was arrested and charged with selling information regarding the bomber program directly to the Chinese government. He would ultimately be convicted and sentenced to 32 years in prison for this violation of the Arms Export Control Act. And as you can imagine, rumors continued to swirl about Chinese efforts to reverse engineer this technology. By 2009, details began to emerge of a Chinese stealth fighter program under development. This program would, of course, ultimately result in fielding the Chengdu J-20 Mighty Dragon, which would enter service in 2017. But back in 2009, when details were still sparse, it really just sort of shifted American concerns away from the idea that China would be trying to field their own F-117. And instead, it seemed more evident that China was leapfrogging that technology in favor of fielding comparable stealth fighters and potentially a stealth bomber of their own. Those rumors would feel a bit more credible in 2013, when German author and Chinese aviation expert Andreas Ruprecht published renders and pictures of models that appeared to show the basic design of a forthcoming Chinese stealth bomber. The twin-engine aircraft appeared to blur the lines a bit between stealth fighter and stealth bomber, sharing some design cues with both Northrop's B-2 Spirit and its defunct competitor for the F-22, known as the YF-23. 
As some outlets also noted at the time, the wing shape of China's theoretical stealth bomber appeared similar to artist renderings of Russia's own advanced low-observable bomber program known as the PAC-DA, which had been under development since 2009. But it seems clear that this design was not for a heavy payload platform like the B-2 Spirit, but rather part of China's other developmental stealth effort to field a medium-range fighter bomber. Nonetheless, it clearly demonstrated that China was incorporating stealth design elements into its next generation of bombers. By July of 2014, the veil was beginning to lift over China's stealth bomber efforts, with a full-page feature published in the state-run China Daily newspaper highlighting the future developments of China's rapidly modernizing military. Highlighted among these efforts was the development of an intercontinental strategic bomber capable of penetrating an enemy's air defenses. The article outlined the need for a bomber that could carry 10 tons of ordnance, for a minimum of 8,000 kilometers, which is about 4,970 miles without refueling. This would place America's military installations on Guam well within its reach, without the need for mid-air refueling, but wouldn't get you to American shores. In 2016, China's People's Liberation Army Air Force Commander General Ma Zhoshin formally announced the nation's efforts to develop a new generation of long-range bombers. According to a 2021 assessment conducted by the Office of the Secretary of Defense, this announcement was likely in reference to the development of China's stealth bomber, which is often referred to as the H-20. That same assessment also indicates that China had had success in trying to reach the goals outlined in that 2014 China Daily column, stating that this new bomber would likely employ fifth-generation or stealth technology boast a range of at least 8,500 kilometers, about 5,280 miles, a payload capacity of at least 10 metric tons, and nuclear weapon delivery capabilities. That same 192-page report, all of it riveting reading, also refers to this program as a flying wing stealth bomber, which is an important distinction to make. Then, in 2018, China would not only seemingly confirm that its forthcoming H-20 stealth bomber would leverage a flying wing design, they did it with a serious wink and nod to the very aviation firm many people think they stole their design from. In a video released by the Aviation Industry Corporation of China, or AVIC, an aircraft that looks like a flying wing sat under a drop cloth in a strikingly similar presentation to Northrop Grumman's own Super Bowl commercial featuring a drop cloth covered B-21 Raider. The Chinese video, of course, did not overtly discuss this stealth bomber, but it seemed like a very intentional effort to frame the H-20 as China's response to America's forthcoming stealth bomber. So now that we know the timeline, what do we really know for sure about China's H-20? The truth is, not a lot. But there are a number of assertions we can make with some level of confidence. First and foremost, it will almost certainly be a flying wing design similar to that of America's B-2 Spirit. This offers a number of significant stealth advantages, as we've already discussed. This approach to stealth design limits the aircraft's return not only against targeting radars that leverage X or other high-frequency bands, but also against early warning low-frequency radar bands as well. And that's very important for the types of operations these deep penetration heavy payload bombers are tasked with. They need to fly deep into enemy airspace, deep into heavily defended airspace, to deliver their munitions, often without an escort. And the only real way to accomplish that in the modern era is to be virtually undetectable. The H-20 is expected to be nuclear-capable, firmly establishing China's own nuclear triad of land-based missiles, submarine-launched missiles, and long-range nuclear strategic bombers. If the concept of a nuclear triad is new to you, it's commonly seen as a means of ensuring mutually assured destruction, as it limits an opponent's ability to wipe out your entire nuclear arsenal in any single attack. Even in a giant nuclear onslaught that takes out all your land-based missiles, you'll still have aircraft in the air and submarines at sea that can launch a reprisal. In other words, having a nuclear triad ensures you can hold a nuclear gun to your opponent's head, no matter how devastating their initial attack might be. 
and a very well put together analysis of the chances the H-20 might be taking flight soon. Penned by Thomas Newdick for the Warzone, he highlights that the stealth bomber may carry an active electronically scanned array radar, and specialize in deploying long-range munitions like subsonic low-observable cruise missiles, probably via an internal rotary launcher, not all that unlike the rotary launcher leveraged by America's heavy payload B-52 Stratofortress. If intelligence assessments of the H-20's potential range prove accurate, cruise missiles could help close the apparent range gap between the H-20 and the B-2. The Pentagon believes the H-20's range is, again, at least 5,280 miles, as compared to the B-2's nearly 7,000. The mainland United States is more than 7,200 miles from Chinese shores, and the presence of refueling tankers over the Pacific in some areas could potentially tip off American defenses about an impending strike. But long-range, low-observable nuclear cruise missiles could play a role in China's plans for a reliable means of nuclear weapon delivery from the air. A cruise missile with a 1,200-mile range, for instance, could shave 2,400 miles off of a bomber's round trip which coupled with a sound strategy could allow that bomber to refuel in less conspicuous places. But the real million-dollar question is just how stealthy could this H-20 be? Is it comparable to the B-2 Spirit, which is stealth technology America has had since the 1980s? Or is it more comparable to the forthcoming B-21, chock full of technology America is still working to field? I can't answer that question conclusively, but I can give you a pretty good educated guess. China has made rapid progress modernizing its military apparatus, including fielding one stealth fighter and moving toward placing a second into service. But to date, China just doesn't appear to have demonstrated the same capacity that the United States has for fielding extremely low observable platforms. The J-20, China's current stealth fighter, is believed to boast a very small radar cross-section from directly head-on. But the aircraft itself is largely considered to be far more observable than either of America's stealth fighters. Radar cross-sections, or the size of an aircraft's radar return, are not only rarely publicly disclosed, they're also incredibly difficult to calculate, and vary depending on the angle of observation, or where the radar array is as compared to the aircraft. So, whenever anyone talks about radar cross-sections online, you should always take that discussion with a grain of salt, and that includes when I do it. But expert assessments of the J-20's RCS range from around a half a square meter all the way up to three square meters. Compare that to the F-22's reported radar cross-section of 0 .0001 square meters, or the F-35's slightly larger 0 .0015 square meters. While almost certainly harder to detect than Russia's Su-57 Felon, the J-20's stealth profile just doesn't seem to be on par with the least detectable fighters of its generation. And to be frank, there's little evidence to suggest that China will even be able to match, let alone leapfrog, the B-2's low observable capabilities. The B-2 Spirit's commonly accepted radar cross-section is usually around 0.1 square meters, which you may note is significantly smaller than even the lower estimates for the J-20, despite the B-2 having a 172-foot wingspan. Of course, a great deal of the difference could be attributed to the B-2's flying wing design, but there's still very little evidence to suggest that China's first effort at this sort of low-observable flying wing design will manifest in performance that's equal to America's B-2 spirit. After all, China had direct access to blueprints for both the F-22 and the F-35 during development of the J-20, and it isn't as stealthy as either of them. But even if China's H-20 does manage to prove as low observable as the B-2 spirit, the nation will still be at a number of significant disadvantages. The most prominent, of course, being that America is fielding its own next-generation bomber, said to be significantly stealthier than the B-2 and the B-21 Raider, in just a few years. But beyond that, it's also important to understand that mission planning is one of, if not 
the most important component of any stealth operation, and the United States benefits from literally decades worth of experience operating these types of platforms. Just to send that point home and prove I'm not making it up, I'm going to close with a quote from B-2 pilot Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Kanan, who said, and I quote, in the B-2 community, we say mission planning is our primary tactic, and our quality of mission planning is what sets us apart. So, while America's stealth bomber monopoly may soon be ending, its stealth reign does not appear to be over just yet. And with that ends yet another edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure you swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.